Welcome to the prerequisite video. This is going to talk about the things that you want to be able to do before we get into the actual course. Usually there will be some recommended watching before the series, but this one is actually a foundation course and you don't need to do any watching of any other series before this. Usually, for instance, if you are doing a jumping course, we will recommend to give you something like a landing course before you do that. It just gives you some kind of background on the types of things you want to be thinking about before you do the series. However, there are some prerequisite tools and some things that you are going to need to be able to complete this course. The first one, the primary one, is going to be a bar. So something to be able to pull up on is going to be absolutely essential. Now, obviously I appreciate not everybody can get an, uh, a scaffolding bar inside. So actually something else that you can get that's very cheap but very reliable are pull-up bars that you can get off the internet from Amazon or eBay or any other online retailer. Okay, so the scaffolding bars are going to be very, very handy. They're going to be useful because you're going to get used to having your hand around a bar that thick. The pull-up bars that you get online are actually a little bit thinner and they're not going to replicate the scaffolding bars that much. However, if you can only get the pull-up bar, that's totally fine. We can do this course with that only. Moving on, one of the other things that you're going to need to have is access to these bands. So these are called mobility bands and you can get them from online from a lot of places. However, I would highly recommend getting them from someone like Rogue Fitness. So this one uh, is Rogue or Again Faster or Wolverson. I will put links in the description below. You will uh, be able to have a lot of different places to get these from. The reason I recommend the better quality ones is because the rubber itself is actually better and you actually know what these bands are rated to take in terms of weight. The ones that you get off on Amazon and eBay, actually they're inferior rubber and you don't know whether they can snap at certain weights or not. So it's much, much better to get these ones from Rogue or uh, again Faster or one of the other retailers. As I said earlier in the series, we're going to be going through a lot of variations. So the bands are going to be very handy for the beginner uh, pull-ups. At the other end, we're going to be looking at trying to load ourselves, put weight onto us. And to do that, we're going to use this, which is going to be a weight belt. So this is something else that might come in handy for you if you are going to be up that end of the scale. On top of the, the bar and the bands and the belt, there are going to be a few other little bits and pieces I'm going to throw in which are totally not necessary uh, or essential. We're going to have some pull-up rings and a few other bars and weight plates and little bits and pieces, but they're only going to be applicable for one or two people that are only doing those specific things. So don't worry too much about the other stuff. Primarily think about the bar and then the bands and potentially the belt. Okay, so once we have the equipment, the other prerequisite is actually before we get started is to make sure that we are moving correctly and warm before we do it. So before we actually warm up, we are going to be looking at joint mobility. So the idea behind joint mobility is the fact that we are going to get our joints mobile and primarily the ones that are going to be applicable to the pull-up itself. So those ones we're going to look at are going to be arm based and that's going to incorporate the wrist, the elbow and the shoulder. So let's get started with the joint mobility. Let's start with the wrists and what we're going to do with that is you're going to interlock your fingers like that and you're going to put your forearms together as well. When we're here, we are then going to rotate the wrists in a full range of motion, figure of eight. Now what that means is you are trying to get your wrist to move in the full movement range that it can. So you're essentially every kind of direction you can get your wrists in, that is where you're going to go. And then you can do in the opposite directions too. You can also do this with your hands open and the other way. 
Moving on, we're gonna then go to the elbow. Now the elbow can move in a lot of different planes of motion. So to begin with, we're gonna do circles. So we're gonna start moving this elbow around and around like this, and then in the opposite direction. The idea is that, again, we're trying to get the joint moving as much as possible. We are warming up the synovial fluid in between the joint. So circles and other way. Once you've done that, there's the other plane of motion that the elbow can do is, is from straight. You're going to bend as much as you possibly can. You go between your chest and your arm and then straight underneath. So you're going to come back and forward like that. I like to do roughly 10 on each side. So once you've done this, you're going to switch over and then again circles on this side and the other direction. Remember, arm straight and through and back. And we're targeting the elbow and trying to get it to move as much as it possibly can. Okay, so finally we're going to look at doing the shoulder. So with the shoulder, again, the idea is full range of motion. You're trying to get that shoulder moving in all the different directions it can. So we're going to start with circles. Now something else that you want to think about when you're doing a warm-up is actually starting to get the brain switched on as well. So what I like to do is with both arms you're now going to go in opposite directions and it's going to start getting you to think about what is going on. So you can switch and switch Okay, now obviously the shoulder can move in lots of other directions, so you can do circles, you can do squares, you can do whatever you like to get this shoulder moving as much as you can. Now we've done the joint mobility work, then we're going to go into the warm-up. Now, actually we're going to put the warm-up video at the end of the series. The reason being that we need to be able to understand all the variations of the pull-up that you can do and find out which one is applicable to you. Once we know what that one is, then we can regress back to one or two before that and use those to do, to do a warm-up. However, we need to know what all those different variations are before we actually jump onto the bar. Okay, so let's get into the series and we're going to go into the very first one, which is actually understanding what we want to try to do when we are doing a pull-up.